All right. So welcome, Matt. For those who do not know you, which I think is not, you know, not that many, but uh, please introduce yourself. Yeah, Matt Medeiros, uh, now community at Gravity Forms. You're catching me uh, as your first interview as me as a Rocket Genius employee started last week, representing yep. one of the most prestigious brands in WordPress. Um, and I've been podcasting about WordPress for over 10 years, uh, Matt Report and the WP Minute is where I focus mm -hmm. most of my uh, efforts these days, talking about WordPress. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. So congratulations. That's, uh, it fortunately didn't, because you you would let go. Is that the right? Um, yeah. So, you know, the big tech layoff, uh, the big tech layoffs that happened in January. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I was part of that <laughs> at my last role. And then um, was very fortunate to have a, uh, solid network in the WordPress space and um, was very fortunate to have um, a lot of offers and, and a lot of folks reaching out and uh, landed at, at Gravity mm -hmm. Forms. Yeah. Oh, happy for you. Um, uh, Gravity Thanks. Forms, uh, Carl Hancock is uh, uh, one of those places that I, uh, I admire. Um, they're maybe not as vocal uh, on, uh, on, on, on Twitter and such as they were in the early days. And I'm talking 2008, 2009, I think, early I think it's one, it may be the actual very first premium plugin that I bought. Yeah, it was definitely my very first and still, I still pay for it today. <laughs> so yeah. so I'm, I'm grandfathered in. So um, that, yeah. I think I'm, yeah. that means I'm part of the first thousand or something. But, uh, but that's a great place to land. That's, uh, that's a company I admire at least. So i um, uh, happy for you that uh, Thanks. Same, it didn't yeah. take too long. Same here. I I have the same sentiments, right? R a lot of respect for you know surviving this long as as a form company, building out a great team, and I'm excited to dive yeah. in with them. Yeah, awesome. So you do your uh, community. What does that mean? What does that entail? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be I an interesting. Yeah, yeah, so, so what, it's what going is to be a... going to do for you? Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see me dive into this role. Um, Everyone who I'm going to be working with left for WordCamp Asia this week. So I'm the, I'm the guy so, sitting around the office trying to figure yeah. out like how everything works and, you know, where everything goes. Um, but, uh, you know, leveraging a lot of my current talents that I already do in the WordPress space. So podcasting, YouTube, you know, connecting with others, looking for opportunities yeah. to help uh, grow the business. Um, you know, maybe some partnership stuff. It's, it's a bit of a hybrid role, but, uh, you know, when I look at any software, especially WordPress, and, and why I'm so attracted to WordPress is because as a non-developer, the software makes me feel pretty powerful, right? I can spin up a blog or I could spin up a community site. I can do a lot with WordPress without having yeah. to really learn a lot of code. And um, hopefully maybe, you know, beating that same drum with Gravity Forms because Gravity Forms is a tool that makes me feel really powerful as a non-developer. Like all the things you can do with Gravity Forms to build out oh, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, a, a site or an app, right? So uh, really yeah. looking forward to producing content like that for Gravity Forms. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's one of those plugins that uh, empowers you um, and you don't really have to know any code. You can and you can make it even more uh, wild in what it can do. But uh, just using the basics, and I, I, I use a few of the other um, Gravity Forms extensions as well. Uh, there's there's quite a few, but uh, combined, it's it's amazing. It's absolutely yeah. amazing what you can do with it. But uh, no, but good. That's um, that's nice to hear. Um, I like community. Uh, I've um, done at least at uh, at Yoast. I did a, a large portion of that as well. Partnerships and uh, uh, being active in the community for uh, as vague as that uh, that sounds, but that's essentially <laughs> what it was. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a great it, role. It's a <clears throat> If yeah, it's a great I mean, company, it's, an, it's an interesting time, right, for folks like you and I who are uh, content creators and, you know, we've built community ourselves with our own, mm -hmm. I hate to say like personal brand, but we've built our personal brands or our personal networks. And it's sure. an interesting time for folks like us to have that be leveraged or maybe even exploited, even though that's probably a, a harsher term for it, by other brands. Um, because mm -hmm. I talk to a lot of brands 
when I was looking for a job and there were some folks that were like, Hey, we'd love to have you on the team, but you, you can't do your own like personal podcast anymore and stuff like that, which I totally like, I get it. I respect it. You know, I, I, I understand it. Um, but I think we're living in a time where like so many of us, whatever, we have our side hustles, we do our things because yeah, man, you like, you never know with the economy, right? Like you never know what's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. And, you know, a brand that allows you to do that, you know, one, I'm fortunate enough to, to have that with Gravity Forms, but also Gravity Forms gets a little part of that indirectly, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, which is kind of, you know, cool for them. And, and it's, and it helps us like as content creators to, to have that sort of uh, cachet for us to, um, you know, to have and, and to invest in, in not only ourselves, but the brands that we work with. Yeah, I think... I think that's very accurate. I think there's there's two ways of looking at it, and one is uh, uh, um, there's some you know possibly from the negative side you can think you know aren't you competing with yourself with us in some way or whatever, or and that's how I like to see it. Uh, it's an extension of whomever you, your employer is, um, and as long as you do that in an uh, um, you know um, in a fashion where where uh, that's beneficial beneficial for all, then there's really no no drawback. There's there's just pluses. Um, yeah. Um, no, but it's that, that's great to to, to see you in uh, in that role in in that fashion because I think your your branding, your reach, your your the community, the sense of community that you have around you. Uh, sorry, the sense of the community that you have around you, as well as the people who are in your community. Um, they they are. Um, I don't know. I, I think that's an asset and I think it yeah. should be treated as such. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yep. All right. So, um, we tweeted back and forth uh, a few weeks back. Um, <laughs> we do the, uh, the, it happens a lot more often, but, uh, 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 this led to, uh, me inviting you on my, uh, on my podcast. Um, and the, the general topic, that we were discussing was the, um, the 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 media landscape of WordPress in general. Um, I don't know where we landed or if we landed at all, but uh, uh, it's 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 at least one of the topics I'd like to discuss with you because uh, I uh, I think I mentioned I have opinions. Uh, there's there's things <laughs> going on that uh, that irk me. There's things going on that I like. Um, there's there's at least a lot happening over the last uh, let's say two to three years where where stuff is starting to change. Um, my first question to you would be: um, Are you seeing the changes as well? And if so, um, are you are you seeing them as a positive, a negative, a neutral? What is what do you see in general, if at all? Yeah, so if we're if we're strictly talking about the changes in in WordPress media, well, first let me just let me just restate that question to you. Are we talking just WordPress media changes? Yeah, mostly. Yeah, yeah. I, I say mostly because it, it's also bleeding out of the uh, the uh, the community as it was uh, five years ago. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I think that you know if we look back at let's say two thousand seven, two thousand eight, when when there was another sort of global uh, financial crisis, um, you had this perfect storm for WordPress. Uh, WordPress was going from just okay to pretty damn good, right? Uh, yeah. At that time, version three something, custom fields was really taking off, custom post types, and people were looking at this thing like, wow, I can, I can do a lot with this. I can build a business with this. Agencies, plugins, themes, those were the heydays, right? People really coming into the market yep. because economics and stuff like that, it was a great way to, to, to build revenue for those who are looking to build a business and, and you know, get a new job. Same thing, I think, is going to happen, maybe not to the same degree uh, into 2023, into 24, but <clears throat> with 200,000 tech folks recently laid off, I think we'll see a, a boon in WordPress happen again it's not going to hit that perfect mark where all of a sudden full site editing and Gutenberg are going to be amazing and everyone's going to love it as much as they did custom fields, but it is getting better. And I think we'll see a positive impact, you know, uh, over the next, over the next year. So yeah. when Gutenberg was announced, 
Now, if I zoom out and I look at like, what's the effect of WordPress community, WordPress media, and how has this all impacted into what we have today? If I look at um, when Gutenberg came out, which was four-ish years ago at this point, that was a moment in time where you saw an, a rise of no-code apps. You saw you know, so many different hosting things coming about, people building SaaS apps to do all these unique features, new coding frameworks. Yep. I'm not a developer, so don't beat me up over the terminology. But that was a time where people were already 15 years into WordPress, and when they didn't like the, the direction of Gutenberg, it was a perfect opportunity for people to be like, you know what? I'm going to go get this other shiny object that I like, <laughs> right? I don't want this. I don't want JavaScript. I don't want to learn this code again. And, and I'm, not, I'm not having it. And that was a perfect moment for a lot of people to exit the community, um, you know, as it were. Yep. The, 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 and so that was like a little bit of a deflation of momentum for WordPress at that time. Now, hold that thought. Yeah, with, with I've been doing this for... And all that. Yeah, right. So hold that thought. I've been yep. doing this now for you know a decade and you've been in the community um, probably just as long, if not longer. I think the ceiling for folks like you and me, um, when we look at the WordPress media landscape, I think the ceiling of the most amount of people in the world who care as much as we care about what we're talking about is probably under 10,000. It's probably like 7,000 to 10,000 people who actually care about WordPress as much as we do. Like who would listen to a 45-minute yeah. podcast about WordPress? Now, the broader landscape of WordPress and probably why we've gotten to the point of where we're at with WordPress media is the broader landscape of WordPress is the person who's just like, I need to learn how to install a contact form. <laughs> I need to know how to customize my website. And that's all they care about. Like they don't care about word camps and what's happening with core and like what the economics are of WordPress. They just want what they want as WordPress end users. That's a massive audience, a lucrative audience. If you're a media person, um, if you're a YouTuber, a newsletter person, a blog, affiliates, all of this stuff, it is a massive audience. Um, and it's, it's how we get, if I'm kind of reading into your question, it's how we get, you know, the top 10 restaurant themes. Now that stuff isn't as prevalent. I, I don't think these days because of probably like Envato and template monster have all sort of like uh, diluted that market space, but it's how you get the generalist content, I think, um, because yeah. the landscape is quite broad. Um, and I'll pause to get your reaction to that. I, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I, think, um, I think there was a big shift starting in 2008, um, um, specifically uh, catapulting even further from 2010 when custom post types and custom fields and the whole array of how do I make a really fancy WordPress site became um, uh, a relatively easy thing for someone who is not a developer. Uh, I think that's probably around the time also that uh, CMB, which was a joint uh, thing between um, Web Dev Studios and um, Human Made, that became CMB2 later on. And you also had a custom post type UI from Web Dev Studios. I think those are perfect examples of uh, where WordPress really started to venture out to a larger audience. Um, and of late, I think uh, page builders specifically, I don't like them necessarily. <laughs> yeah. um, let me just get that out of the way. <laughs> but I think yeah, page builders are, are, are servicing a crowd, which are generally not into the, if you call them the, the 10K intimates, um, they're, they're, they, they don't really care. They just want to solve their problem. Yeah. They just want to do whatever they want to do, need to do yeah. uh, whatever. Um, yeah, and that that brings a very different world, um, which we in which we find ourselves now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that type of content consumer, um, you know, I, I would love to do a study on like what the lifetime value is of that kind of content consumer for affiliates. I'm not a big affiliate 
person. I just recommend the tools that I recommend and I don't even track it. <laughs> like I, I don't have a plan to, you know, promote affiliate links um, like, like some other folks do, which, you know, I, I applaud them for the dedication to it. But the point is, is I've seen so many of those folks, especially in the page builder uh, world, just move from one tool to the next, to the next for just yeah, like yeah. the next yeah. free feature. And it's mind boggling yeah. because lots of these folks have, it's your typical customer that you never want to service as, let's say, a design agency or a WordPress development agency. It's always, you know, give me more for less. And that's what these folks are doing. Yet they're the ones going out and building websites for other people. Yeah. And it's just mind boggling yeah. to me. Like these page builders, I don't care which one you love, which one you hate. What they're all trying to do is make web development easier for you. Like they're literally trying to flip 30 years of like, web technology on its head to say, here you go, end user. Uh, I built this GUI for you for coding. Uh, and then people are just never happy them. with it. Yeah, and for, and for that, I applaud them. Um, yeah. When I say I don't necessarily like page builders, it's most mostly because um, they're not built with speed or scalability in mind in, 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 in a few exceptions. And there's a few exceptions where doing the right things, you can make them performant. Um, but it's an afterthought. And, and for me, that needs to be a forethought. That needs to be, okay, lean and mean. We start from there, and we build up on that. Um, and we don't go, let's just build wild and then see how lean and mean we can get it. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's a different approach, uh, and, it's, and it's not my approach. Right. But uh, no, so I, 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 to give you an example, uh, do you know the YouTube account Living With Pixels? I do. I do. So I, I met the guy... Uh, I think his name is Rino. Uh, he's from the Netherlands as well. Um, I met him at WorkCamp uh, Netherlands last year, which was his first. Um, we had a very nice conversation. Um, and and if, if you don't know and you're listening, then um, Rino mostly focuses on Elementor. And he has 150K, 160K uh, subscriber count, which means they're... If we're just taking that 10K example, uh, there is a crowd 15 times, 16 times larger than that mm -hmm. that is very much into design and Elementor, which is exactly the crowd you just mentioned. And I've known they, they are there, obviously. Um, um, I, 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 uh, historically, I've been hired a lot to fix them. Uh, oh, sorry, fix their sites because uh, something happened and, oh, it's not it's not working, it's not scaling, it's please help, which is fine. Um, it, it's business. Um, so I've, I've been aware of that crowd, but it's just not, I've never been part of that crowd. And I, I, I feel that we're slowly seeing that crowd move inward a bit. Um, I don't know if I say that. If I'm being accurate or if it's just a N is one, I don't know. Um, but that's kind of how I see it change at least. And I, I, I agree with you that there's, there's a lot changing. And um, w as with any recession, it's a great opportunity to rethink what you're doing. And I think a lot of people are rethinking what they're doing. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's you know, when you look at Elementor, which is the largest elephant in the room in terms of page yep. builders. I mean, you saw this exponential growth, um, you know, well beyond like visual composer and uh, just like, you know, whatever, fill in the blank site origins, page lines. Like I remember those days um, yep. of, of these tools that you're like, wow, these things are fantastic. But then Elementor just, just took off. And, you know, from somebody who's been in the startup world for a, a while and analyzing the WordPress startup world for a while, it's not easy for them either to like grow that fast and hire people and build out the code base. Meanwhile, playing in the WordPress sandbox, which is a challenge onto itself uh, through WordPress.org. And it's not an official like theme. Rep it's not an official marketplace like Shopify or um, you know, yep. fill in the blank of other, another, another marketplace, get the data that they need, and then be backwards compatible with what WordPress wants. Super big challenge, which is why you see them going into now the hosting world, um, as one would imagine, is because well, they now they, they have to, right? They have to be able to control yeah. uh, th their software. And 
it's the same, it's no different than, you know, what we'll see .com and wordpress.org do, I think in the coming years where you'll see this sort of more packaged and and marketed line from automatic that says if you want the best way to experience WordPress, start on .com for 10 bucks a month. And then, oh, by the way, you can just yep. do it yourself and connect it with Jetpack on .org and forget about third-party developers at that point. Um, but you'll see that connection and that marketing speak, I think, much greater uh, in the coming years. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I see that happening already. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting for them to uh, rebrand uh, from uh, Jetpack, sorry, from, from WordPress.com to Jetpack.blog or something like that. That makes more yeah. sense to me. Yeah. Um, but it's quite possible that the piggyback off of .org is uh, is helping them still. Um, never never really got any insight into that, but uh, it's always made me curious. Um, but the um, that general move is happening. Um, so with that, um, you mentioned uh, offhand uh, um, the best ten restaurant uh, uh, themes or, or plugins for whatever as as one of the things we were inundated with. Uh, I would say for the least, uh, let's say for the last ten years, the whole listicle thing really blew up. Um, <laughs> yeah. The quality of WordPress news, as it was, uh, went down. Um, like I would say to a quality level of almost non-existent, just uh, um, I need to get in front of somebody else and I have my affiliate link, so here they are. That type of content. Um, do you see, what, what do you see changing in that portion of the, the media landscape? So WordPress, like true WordPress content is, is really tough. And I know that you could probably, I mean, and by tough, I mean, it's a difficult thing to turn into a business. And I'll, I'll break down some of the parts of that. One we already talked about is the audience size literally is not yeah. there, right? It's just not there for what we do. Um, and maybe like, you know, you see things, you know, broad things that happen like uh, social media, like how many times do, do humans need to go through social media outlets, pulling the rug out from underneath them, right? Like it's their data, it's their content, it's their algorithm, it's their rules. And you keep getting less and less for your money. It's like taxes, right? You know, so it's just like, what am I getting, you know, from this? Um, so you you hope to see things like the rise of of Mastodon over Twitter, or at least the awareness of it, that mm -hmm. it's important that your your biggest and most valued open source content management system that allows you to express yourself, build a business, do whatever, um, that there's some kind of watchful eye over this stuff. So basically, what I'm getting at is hope. Hopefully humans care a little bit more. And next year, the numbers of people who care more goes up to 15,000 people, which is tiny, right? Um, so there's that. And with that is the, the money factor, right? Mm -hmm. As somebody who has been doing this now for a while, um, there's only so much sponsorship you can get. There's only so much, um, you know, not talking affiliate play, not talking the listicles and stuff like that, just focused on like what I do at WP Minute. There's only so much yep. sponsorship you can have. Why? Chicken and egg, because of the audience size. When I sell sponsorship, most of that money is going to come from a web hosting company because they have the money. They have the money. But you get in front of big hosting companies and they want everyone's favorite term, ROI. How many clicks am I going to get? How much? Uh, how yep. many accounts are we going to have sign up? And it's like, nah, you, you probably want to go sponsor Tim Ferriss's podcast instead because he's going to have millions of downloads versus my thousands of downloads. Um, and that's just the game you're going to have to play. If you want to support independent content, that's why you're here. So there's that challenge, right? And then there's the challenge yeah. of, of, of writers and, and content and, and what are we covering, um, you know, and the cost of that, right? The cost of running that business. Um, I uh, employ Eric Karkovac. He's the editor at the WP Minute. And I literally take all of the money I earn on sponsorship and slide it across the desk and give it to him. And it's not a lot of money, <laughs> you know, and I'm so grateful that he, he does it, you know, with me. Um, but it's yeah. very challenging to grow a team in this space, which means that if you're listening to this and, and you're saying, well, how can I survive? Yeah. I mean, 
number one, I do the WP Minute. It's a five-minute podcast because because of that, because I, I need to keep the time invested down because it's not making a ton of money. But then you start to look at broadening the coverage, just like a newspaper, um, where you might be looking at, okay, here's the news, but then here's fashion week, right? Here's, here's the latest trends in fashion, which goes back to, yeah, here's the best page builder, right? Yeah. Like here's the best page builder. Here's all the restaurants. Here's restaurant week. Like here's all the, you know, seafood uh, places that are open this week. And yeah, those are the, you have to strike that fine balance to bring in the most broad uh, listenership or readership viewership, um, you know, to, to kind of like build that business. So it's tough. And, and I'll, the last thing I'll say here is Topher who runs hero press um, yeah. had recently uh, reposted from his own archives that he originally started a Kickstarter for hero press at $60,000 to get that off the ground. And I messaged him as I do on Twitter with a comment. It's like, yeah, but now it's probably $160,000 to, to run that because uh, whatever inflation time went by, but to realize the actual cost, it would take to yep. employ just one or two people to produce good content. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it, it's going to take awesome. some money and time. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great example um, where it's it's super obvious that uh, whatever worked in the past does not work in this in today's world. Um, I, I started thinking about something else you you kind of touched. Um, the um, If we're to find people outside of the current bubble, current circle, and include them, if you want to grow to the, the 10,000 fans to 15,000 fans, um, where do, do you see the media landscape being the, um, the party that is supposed to be taking care of that? Is that, or mm. is that a job of, uh, whatever happens at, uh, WordCamp Central, uh, slash meetups? Is that, uh, where does that responsibility lie or should it be designated anywhere? So I'll, I'll, I'll give you my secret sauce and what I'm trying to do, and then I'll talk about it from uh, the, the broader perspective. The, sure. I'll start with the broader perspective first. So if we take a look at the WP Tavern, love what Sarah does over there. Uh, love what Nathan does with the podcast, but you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to give the trophy to Sarah <laughs> in terms of like WordPress journalist, really sure. like digging for the stories, but, but also having to put out, um, the Gutenberg's, you know, tutorials and overviews and stuff like that. And, and I'm saying that because as an insider, I see the comments. Uh, I see people comment on the tavern, like, why are you covering this? And, you know, you're just a, a shill for automatic, which is the furthest from the truth. However, as much respect as I have for, for Sarah and her work, it is solely owned by uh, Audrey Capital, which is Matt's investment company. Yep. Uh, a la Matt and automatic. And again, nothing wrong with that. But the idea is, the only real paper of record is for covering WordPress and Automatic is owned by Matt, who also uh, runs Automatic. So there's that challenge. Yeah. But when I analyze it, why isn't there more? Why haven't we hired a, another staff writer uh, at the Tavern? Why isn't Matt really investing you know, in that? One, he's the most busy guy I know. Uh, so, I mean, like, I can understand there's not many brain cells left for, for the Tavern after that. But still... Yeah, yeah. Um, You'd, you'd, you'd expect some kind of push on that. And, and maybe he is, and maybe that's happening behind, behind the scenes. I don't know. Um, but she's got a, Sarah has a lot of work on her plate, you know, to do that. Um, there is a, and now I'll talk about somewhere in the middle of where I was going to go before. There's a lot of disadvantage uh, in what I'll say is unfairness, <laughs> you know, in, in the media landscape. So uh, how do we reach that? How do we go from 10,000 to 15,000 to 50,000? You know, the, the only on-ramp I know for exposing WordPress news to regular WordPress users is that, you know, little throwaway widget that loads up on the dashboard of um, yeah. every WordPress site, which anyone can disable. It's not very, you know, it does not like this big banner that shows up like you should watch this. Um, but that is like the one way I would love to see more openness uh, for sites like you and me, right? Um I mean, I've been covering it now for over a decade and uh, no one's ever asked me to uh, be in there or included in there, though there are others that are in there and I don't know of 
a formal way to request, you know, my media I, to, you know, to go I, into I, that. WP Candy is still in there. Right. <laughs> so they, the yes. Yeah. So there you go. Um, whoever buys that site, if he ever sells it uh, one day, will just uh, magically appear in the dashboard. So there's some, yeah. you know, friction in the middle, as there always is in the WordPress world of like, how did that person get that? And how do I get this? And how do we connect the dots? Now, mm -hmm. moving to my secret sauce of how do I move that to, how do we move to 10 to 15,000? The whole concept, uh, when I thought critically about like, how can I build a business around WordPress news? One, it was to decouple that content from Matt Report because it's not a very scalable <laughs> uh, asset. I can't really sell Matt Report without selling myself. Uh, and uh, it, it was just, I wanted to focus on something that was purely WordPress. Um, and the product of the WP Minute is five minutes. So I thought to myself, I'm never going to get in front of, you know, the WooCommerce store owner and she's selling cupcakes and she's got a brick and mortar store and she doesn't care about WordPress, but she might care about big security patch or big change in WooCommerce that changes taxes and how she handles her taxes. Maybe a five minute podcast that she can just put on Amazon Alexa and just like hit the hit the mark uh, every Wednesday, yep. maybe that type of person will tune in to that type of content. So that's my sort of playbook of reaching the masses for WordPress news. Is That's why it's hyper-condensed, five minutes, bullet point-ish, but with some, with Eric's, you know, fantastic uh, writing skills, adds a lot more value mm -hmm. and, 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 and content to the bone of that, of that newsletter. Yeah, that's an, that's an interesting approach. Um, without having had asked myself that particular question, I do have the answer uh, for myself. Um, and um, that's mostly on... Uh, so um, when, I, when I left Servbolt, my last employer, um, I, had I had time to figure out what I wanted. Did I even want to go back into WordPress full-time? Uh, on on my own was the initial thought that was that was I, I I quickly settled on that but then and now that now there's this opportunity to focus specifically on on stuff that I really want to do versus on uh, hey I'm looking for work uh, just throw anything at me um, and I, I I believe in kismet so I, whatever would come my way would then be what it whatever it needed to be um, but I also kind of want to become a little bit more of a master of my own destiny. So I started thinking, what are the topics I really enjoy? And what are the things I really enjoy? And um, then I got to back to why I started using WordPress in the first place. So this is 2004 was my first playing. And then I discarded it for almost a year. So 2000, end of 2005 were my really... Um, first honest uh, attempts of, of doing something with WordPress. Um, and it was mostly just content creation, so blogging, uh, sharing stuff, um, not just text, but whatever I could uh, uh, create um, was put on there. I'm also very happy to say that that URL is no longer available, nor will I ever share what it was. <laughs> it's, oh, God, I, Remkus World. <laughs> Remkusworld.net. <laughs> Uh, let's just say I no no no, <laughs> but let's just say I I, I learned and improved myself uh, in that area as well. But it, it that was what pulled me in, um, and I, I I then went. So I I have stuff that I want to put out. Uh, there's stuff that I think that needs to be out there. Uh, I'm I'm a huge proponent of performance uh, first, lean and mean. I've said it before. Um, how about I focus on that first and then sort of satellite around it, what I think is nice and interesting. So instead of just rebooting my agency, which was still um, uh, technically there, uh, I went ahead and new name, uh, new specific focus. And uh, I started to include, okay, I want to do the newsletter. I have been wanting to do the newsletter proper for forever. And I've done it on and off. But I've, you know, there was always a reason why I couldn't uh, spend t more time on it. Um, so that is now fixed schedule in what I do. Uh, and then quickly, uh, um, video uh, slash podcast slash YouTube became 
I really want to play with this. This is fun. This is, this is a new way of educating, helping people. Um, and I'm sort of using the same focus I, I have with my agency and, and the stuff that I, um, you see me promote most on Twitter uh, and Mastodon. But I, I kind of went like, so there's, let me just brainstorm around these general topics that I find interesting and, uh, and come up with tutorials and, and how to's or don'ts and, you know, things of that nature. Um, and it's, it's essentially servicing the same purpose. Um, I don't necessarily expect to get, uh, uh, incredibly wealthy off of whatever I put on YouTube, but, um, I also have recognized that in the last, uh, you know, we all know what happened early 2020. Uh, that from that moment on, stuff really started to change on on video side of things. So YouTube really became very prominent in, okay, there's a lot of information here as well. Uh, and, and and when you couple that with, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll turn 50 this year, so I'm 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 no um, I'm no spring chicken anymore. But uh, <laughs> the realization I had in versus I, I have kids half my age and a little bit younger. Uh, they don't primarily search through our traditional search engines. They use whatever medium they have, and YouTube is one of them. Um, so they'll they'll paste their questions into YouTube, which is uh, I read it somewhere, and I actually I had never checked that with my kids. So I go, so if you need to search this, where do you go find your information? And and they, <laughs> the eldest two went like YouTube. Where else? Right. I'm like, yeah, yeah. well, they're here's a list of where else. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it, it just that realization, uh, which happened, um, uh, before the, before the summer, uh, of, uh, of, uh, 21, I think I, I started understanding, uh, the landscape, lands, uh, the landscape has had, had, has really changed. Um, kind of made me like investigate, like what's going on here? What is there? And then, um, uh, as with the low quality content on the website side of things, that also happens on the YouTube side of things. So um, me being uh, uh, not hindered by any imposter syndrome went like, I, I, I think I can do that. Uh, I don't know how, and I'm still figuring out a lot of how to do it. But I've started to create my first tutorials. Um, I went easy and started using those that certain clients of mine needed. So just but then handle it professionally. Right? This could go on to YouTube for a generic uh, public. Uh, and by doing that, I, I find myself in a flow again of enjoying creating. Uh, and the byproduct is uh, people enjoy it. People learn of new things, learn of, um, of things that you and I find very normal within the WordPress community, but on the whole, that whomever group outside of 10K um, really doesn't understand or doesn't is not aware yeah. of or has just never even heard of anything remotely. Oh, so there's okay. So yeah, I know I know my site needs to be fast, but what does that really mean? Yeah, that means every single choice you make from the moment you install it to you publish that first post has an impact on performance. And and they go like, yeah, I kind of know that, but really, yeah, yeah, really. So. Let's let's explain. Let's let's dive into that. So, um, courses, newsletter, and uh, YouTube are going to be the three pillars, um, and where I see my podcast part of YouTube uh, are going to be the pillar for me going forward in terms of uh, I'm I'm focused on dedicating time for this. So it's not going to be an afterthought. It's going to be part of whatever I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The the so a few things. There's you know when you look at the the landscape of of content creators. Look, I love it when you launch a podcast. When you launch a podcast, Michelle Frechette launches her 80th podcast. <laughs> uh, I love it when new podcast, WordPress podcasts, or newsletters, or blogs, or news sites come into the space because you know uh, again, I'm a firm believer that the more content, the better. Um, you know, I just hope that when folks come in they have put as much thought into it as you have and, and Michelle have and, and so many others um, because mm -hmm. the one, the thing we don't want is to just, you know, to do the quick, the quick buck thing, which is 
make a I quick sale that. on affiliate links or, you know, sponsorship stuff. I mean, I won't, I certainly won't name names, but man, so many times I've seen people come into the space and, uh, and ask for sponsors and get sponsors, you know, and then all that does is just like when I was in the, the agency world, when somebody sold a $500 website and it was terrible or they disappeared and didn't support them. And then they came to my agency and we're like, it's $5,000 to start. They're like, I'm not getting, I'm not paying that. I got burned already. And it just screws up the whole balance <laughs> of the ecosystem, does, does. you know? So yeah. there's that. And just like you're finding, like, it's going to become more challenging. Um, you have to be omni-channel for, for your audience and for your brands because you're not going to get it in one place. Like, you won't just get that one market through a podcast or that one market through a newsletter. You can certainly, you can certainly do it and, and be sustainable and be successful, whatever success means to you. But if you are trying to grow mm -hmm. it to the maximum, yeah, you have to be omni-channel. You have to do the YouTube, you, you know. Probably have to do TikTok. Yeah. I'm not even on that. Like I'm not even touching that. You know, so it's am, it's going to I be challenging. TikTok, yeah. yeah, it's it's gonna be challenging for folks. And you know, and I've talked about this publicly before on some of like the post status Twitter spaces. Um, you know, before the shift to focus more on the WP minute, um, the the first year revenue with sponsorships, um, which kind of crossed over from Matt Report. So for like the last three years, it was probably $50,000 in revenue that I did for sponsorship through the Matt Report and then into uh, $50,000 a year into the WP Minute. So mm -hmm. that's like 10 years, like pouring 10 plus years into this space of all content types. And then me knocking on people's doors like, please support me, <laughs> you know, please sponsor this content. Um, and that's yep. not a lot of money to grow a true air quotes again, no, for those not. of you just listening, it's not a lot of money to grow a true business out of it. Like I can't just go and hire a writer for 50 K there's all the money. <laughs> and what else? <laughs> like I got to pay the bill. Uh, you know, I got to pay the hosting fee. No, I actually I don't cause Kinsta supports me, but, um, you get the point is you need hundreds of thousands of dollars just to even make a dent in a sustainable business, like a writer, and somebody else. And then there goes all that money. <laughs> so how do you grow WordPress yep. news to half a million bucks a year, right? Or, and, and beyond. So that's why the approach is challenging. I think there's only one person who has achieved that. Yeah. Are we naming names? <laughs> I thought you were going to name a name. The WP beginner. That's, yeah. that's as far as I know, um, and I should say the empire that is WP Beginner, because it's not just that site. There's a couple of sites that are essentially uh, built in a way that combined, they dominate the top five uh, for any search query you have related to WordPress. Uh, I'm not necessarily a fan of it because it's a... Um, it's, uh, uh, Struggling to so, this is a good example of really liking a person. I, I I really like Syed. I don't necessarily like the product. Yep. Um, because what it does, it um, it's not neutral in any way, shape, or form. Um, having said that, you don't need to be neutral. It's not about that. But it's uh, when you're not that omnipresent, it's hard. It's it's yeah. hard for anybody. Yeah not in that circle, not understanding how all those sites interconnect and how everything uh, just keeps piggybacking off of each other. Um, now he's, look, it's, it's, it's incredible what he's, he's achieved in that realm. Um, but I think it comes with the downside. Um, and I think I just mentioned it. Yeah. It's, uh, and, and, and I think they as a whole are the only content creating party within WordPress uh, news uh, that I'm, I'm fairly confident is, uh, is making at least the type of money that you just mentioned per year. Yeah. 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 Oh God. More. Yeah. I mean, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely a lot more <laughs> through the WP beginner. Um, I just had him on uh, the WP minute plus podcast and yeah. we talked, we talked more about like uh, the product sales and, um, sort of facing the community with, you know, his 
uh, the marketing strategies around the products, um, the cross promotion, um, you know, that yep. kind of thing. We didn't get into the WP beginner stuff. Uh, but yeah, it, it's definitely a gray area. And look, also very friendly with Syed, known him for years. One of the worst mistakes I ever made was WordCamp Miami telling him that I had more YouTube subscribers than, than he did. And then he went and started a YouTube channel uh, and then just like put his staff on it and just like outpaced everybody. Uh, but yeah. He, um, yeah. look, I mean, it's, he's trying to grow a software business in, in WordPress, which is, which is not easy. Like we we're all taking this experience for granted these last 20 years, um, because when the mothership changes <laughs> and, and, and repackages and remarkets and, and pivots that there's a paid version at .com and a free version over at .org, the landscape is going to shift. The better Jetpack gets, the more the the blue collar digital workers, the ones who are making a hundred K a year, selling some plugins here and there, they're going to get squeezed by Jetpack because of marketing and, and the way that everyone onboards the software. Right. So Pure, purely the weight that they pull. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I respect the game that Syed's in and you know what, what he, he already realizes is the, the customers will vote for with their dollars and the community will vote with their recommendations. So the more he upsets the apple cart, the less folks like you and I, who are the decision makers in the community with our clients, with our local communities, with people that we help with WordPress, we're going to tell them don't use that product, right? That's, that's mm -hmm. going to be the unfortunate trade-off that he'll have to, to face. Yep. And, and if, if, if that continues to happen, which it sounds like the community is already doing, but his business is still growing, then you have to sit back and look at it and go, well, the customers aren't upset with the product and the customers are okay paying this money and the customers are okay with a flash deal that wasn't really a flash deal. I mean, yep. at the end of the day, if, that, if he's servicing the customer and they're happy and they're happy with the software and the software is improving, you can just take a deep breath and be like, yeah, I mean, this is, this is what it is. Um, I, I agree. It's it's tough to form an opinion on, um, right? At, at least on, on on the is it good or is it bad? Because that 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 that's a that's a question you'll you'll never right. truly answer. Um, I, like I said, um, I, I I salute him for what he's achieved and what he's made possible. Um, he's also giving back uh, tremendously. Um, it's just that. Uh, um, yeah, for someone new uh, jumping into the, the the search engines and the, and the whatnot and wanting to find information that is that is uh, neutral, it's tough. That's yeah. tough. It, it, yeah. um, it, it's it's just not a lot out there that they haven't covered. Right. Um, so it, it, it's one of the things I looked at and have looked at in previous years. Um, WPRealm.com was an uh, was an attempt. Uh, but that became partly because just not enough time, but also uh, just ended up me being alone. Um, it just doesn't work. Um, you need um, this. It, it, it's not a side job type of thing. It's not a let, let me just uh, squeeze that in in the evenings or whatever. Uh, <laughs> well, now you're exposing me because that's exactly what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, you you you. So I I did as well. Uh, yeah. But I came very quickly to the conclusion: this is not working. This is just yeah, yeah. this is just too much. And then, so th what? What's an interesting question here is how much of a um, uh, what's the English word? How much of an advantage does he have? How much uh, is he in front of the pack? Mm. Uh, will will his dominion, his dominance, how, will will that ever be caught up with? I'm 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 struggling to find any other answer as uh, that that'll that'll never happen. Yeah, I mean it is. Um, it's a it's a very he has a tremendous advantage over a lot. Uh, you know, technically uh, from like search engine uh, SEO terms, like he has a tremendous advantage. Uh, links, cross cross uh, promotion. Um, the many different products that he has. I mean, he has a really strong advantage. And 
you know, I would look at it like if I were in the plugin business or, you know, here we are, here I am at, at Gravity Forms is you keep your head down and you focus on your core customers and your, you know, core product offering, mm -hmm. um, you know, not playing the game that, that, that he's playing because ultimately he'll also get to a point, you know, and this is just me totally hypothetical, um, conspiracy theory, but <laughs> you'll get to a point where at some point you're going to, you're going to acquire so much that there has to be some massive like pricing change. There has to be something that's going to change in his portfolio of products to reach all customers. Um, because I don't think yeah. he'll be able to really keep up with um, having, because we talked about this a little bit. So you could go buy Thrive Themes, which he just acquired and whatever the price is, I don't know, yep. let's say it's 400 bucks or something like that. Then you're going to go and let's say buy Optin Monster for all those sites if, if, if there's a cross promotion there. What I'm getting at is there's going to get to a point where his customers will be like, hey, there's a premium at every product I'm paying you for. And he'll yep. get to a point where he'll get so much customer feedback that maybe, and maybe not, maybe I'm just wrong, that they're going to be like, hey, look, I want one price for all your stuff because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it on all this, on, on, on my sites. And now I'm looking at like I'm paying you five grand a year where maybe I just go to HubSpot for 200 bucks a month and get all of that sort of like functionality from one vendor. And That's what will happen is, is, you know, there'll probably be some restructuring, which will really shape reshape the, the focus of the business. I mean, or not. I mean, he's bootstrapped, right? There's no outside investment. Yep. So he says, yep. um, which is, which is tremendous. The only one that should really be looking at him um, is one Elementor and two people should be looking at him Elementor and um, automatic should be like the really only ones looking at him like, Oh shit, what are we going to do about this guy? Right. And, yeah. and uh, I've publicly said, I think, if anyone's going to buy Elementor, it's going to be awesome motive, right? Because it's like, it's either he has to get a hosting company next, or he has to just get a massive page builder um, that's going to take five, you know, acquire 5 million customers. Um, or he's going to buy I'm a mail. Both. Yeah, or both, or both. Or he buys ConvertKit. Like, there's going to be something that he does that is yeah. going to get, like, yeah. get to the next level. Um, that's going to be a, a, a big shock. The, the the way uh, that business is growing, it's going to have to end up with um, uh, hosting and and page builder is very very likely, in, at least in my book, in terms of uh, um, he he wants to be the one stop shop for anything um, where you're a commercial uh, where you commercialize your website. His products are essentially targeting that. From that perspective, he needs to be on the hosting side of things and he needs to be. But, you know, the question is, do you want that kind of headache? It's a different world. Um, I don't know. It's a, yeah. But it's, it's an interesting one. I think automatic should have been there. Uh, and I think that this, this come back, comes back to your, uh, your mentioning of uh, WP Tavern. Um, uh, I, I, I've said this before. WP Tavern doesn't, uh, um, doesn't target me as, a, as, a, as an audience. Um, that's not to say that it doesn't uh, suit uh, have have a good place in the in the in the in the media landscape of WordPress. I just think it's lacking a lot, um, and that is something I think automatic slash Audrey or maybe just go, maybe just say Matt um, could have been uh, uh, in front of earlier because uh, yeah. that's clearly where the battle is uh, is won. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's, I mean, look, when I look at, when I look at WordPress news, right? Like I don't look at WP beginner getting into that, like the WordPress, like community and news stuff and why, because no. there's no money in it. <laughs> so no. there's money in recommending other products and affiliate links and hosting companies. And that's where Syed focuses WP beginner on. And, um, you know, uh, you know, this is, what I was alluding to earlier in the conversation about folks like you and me and others maybe listening to this who are content creators and leveraging that I've been doing this one. I've been doing this again, many, many years one, because I love open source and I love WordPress and I love what it can do for, for humans. Like not like I can build a cool website, but that somebody who lost a job or is, 
on down an unlucky path, like they can learn a skill and use WordPress as a tool to change their lives. Like communities could invest in WordPress development shops or educational classes and really help a local community thrive in a, in a technical sector, um, which is not just WordPress, Absolutely. but open source in general. And that's why I really love it. Uh, and that's why I continue to do it. And two, it's not about the 50K a year, or maybe hoping to get to 100K a year in revenue of sponsors, um, but that, look, when I lost my job, <laughs> I put out a video, said I lost my job, and I had a, a massive network effect of people reaching out saying, we would love to hire you. So it's yep. my payout on creating this content is a little bit different than, well, maybe similar to you, but maybe different than most who look at it, who are like, no, I'm trying to build like an affiliate farm. I'm trying to grow revenue. And that's cool. Like you can go and do that. I have no problem with that, but I'm putting sort of uh, building my trust and who I am in this space. And that's my investment for whatever the next opportunity is. <laughs> like literally that's all it is. It's like, what's, what's the next opportunity or, or how can I help other people? And, and that's it. Um, that's what it's all about for me. And if I can generate revenue to build a sustainable asset, which is the WP minute, then cool. Um, you know, and, and that's how I'll keep this thing, keep this thing going without me just like totally burning out, um, you know, from content generation. So, um, yeah, everyone has a different path with, with WordPress content. So hopefully the, the good ones stick around. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I hope as well, I, I, I would love to see, um, something like WPLift.com. Uh, which is for me nothing more than listicles, um, but they have, you know, they have a potential. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I learned that uh, last year it's uh, it switched owner again. Mm -hmm. uh, I at least see WP Lift account being more active on Twitter. Um, but there's there's more out there that I think deserve a place. Um, but yeah, it's 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 hard. It's it's hard to make that. Um, on its own and, and have it make money. That's, that's incredibly hard. Yeah. Did you watch the auction and see how much it sold for? I didn't watch the auction, but I think it was uh, significantly less than what it was uh, purchased for earlier. Yeah. Cause I had originally interviewed, um, when it was purchased before, which I think was like 400 K 380 K something yeah, like that. Something like that. Yeah. And then, um, I'm, I forget his name. Dom. I lived at yeah. I thought he was from the Netherlands. No, he was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So then I think this recent auction went for like 180 K and I wrote a piece yeah. on the WP minute about it. Cause I was like furious, <laughs> which was more, much, uh, it was more like, you know, I'm like, damn, like 180 K. Like I, you know, maybe I should have just been doing that all along. Right. And I, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, yeah, I could have yeah, been, yeah, you know, yeah. I it could have been just doing affiliates and, and listicles and, but whatever, like I'm, and I'm but sure you, you are too. Would you, would you happy? Um, would look, you I would be happy to, uh, you know, look, if I could build out an asset to, I'm always looking to like reinvest it into something else. Like the work mm -hmm. that I, I want, this is why I've made like, like sort of like this creative pivot to not like, I haven't done a Matt report podcast. Well, I did one last month, but prior to that, not since like last, last September, um, because I've, I only have so much time and I've been focusing on the WP minute. I want to build something that is number one, sustainable, but two, helpful to a group of people I'm really passionate about the WordPress community, really passionate about the podcast community because there's a big open source movement there. And I'm really passionate mm -hmm. about my local community. So <laughs> I'm like in this tug of war in my head of like, how can I serve these three different communities effectively through like my talents, which is fucking podcasting. <laughs> Right. So, uh, and, 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 and YouTube, right. So I would have been happy having something I could reinvest into those other efforts. Yes. But yeah, you're absolutely right. When I started my YouTube channel, I'll make this quick. When I started my U YouTube channel, um, plug and tut, which, which I created, I think 2017, I um, which I've now rebranded to the WP minute. I was just probably just like you tutorial, 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 four days a week, five days a week of just pumping out these hour long, you know, tutorials. And I hated it. <laughs> like I got to a point where I couldn't stand it. And I shut the, I, I remember just like totally burning out and never logging into the YouTube account, never logging into the YouTube account when I got to like 900 subscribers. And I'm like, this is not fun. I hate it. And then like yeah. Google AdSense sent me the first like $50 check or $100 check, whatever it is that they paid out. 
And I was like, oh, cool. This is like months, months later. And then I logged in and it went from when I last shut the laptop to 900 subscribers to whatever it was, like 2,500 subscribers without me even touching it. Yep. And then I was like, yeah, yeah. oh man, like I shouldn't have given up on this. <laughs> and then yeah, I started yeah. to reinvest in it in a, again and then hit another burnout too because I started to have kids and like all this stuff and keeping up with like the algorithm and the thumbnails. And I'm like, this sucks. Yeah, um, it, it's you know, fine. but it's a, it's a thing. It, it started to generate revenue. And when I was having, uh, you know, my kids, when they were using seven diapers a day or more, whatever the number was, yeah, like that extra <laughs> $700, that came in from Google AdSense every month, that was awesome. That was nice. um, yeah, yeah. You know, so now it's up to like 14 and a half thousand and I'm just restarting to put uh, WordPress, the WordPress news stuff on there um, and just taking it slow again because it's it's a... It's a scary ride, man. Like that, the algorithm and, and pumping it out and views and you're always like watching it. Then you get the negative comments and you're like, the humans aren't, aren't, not every human is built for this. <laughs> That's for no. sure. No, no, no. Well, um, I, I, yeah, I, I think, um, it's, uh, it, the whole, uh, being of service helping is wonderful. Uh, but it's 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 clear that that's not the only thing you can survive on if you want to be part of the the WordPress media landscape. Right. Um, and uh, to come back to the uh, original um, back and forth we had on Twitter, I think that essentially is my um, my my biggest opinion. That is, um, it it's unsustainable to be fully independent uh, and servicing the community. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's undoable. It, it, it <laughs> there's, there's just too much. Yeah, there's just too much that that comes with it, and you're too dependent <clears throat> on somebody else's gratitude, somebody else's uh, uh, check. I guess even it's just um, it's hard. The only way it works is uh, is is actually approaching it from an affiliate point of view, but that leaves you with dead content. I mean, for me, it's dead content. Um, I don't appreciate reading it. Uh, I don't work with it. I don't, I just skip it altogether. Um, and the only thing that for me uh, now works with my newsletter is that uh, I already did it a little bit, but I'm, I'm explicitly speaking in my own voice. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm adding my humor, my take on the things that I see. And I, I, I put time and effort into making sure that what I cover at least three quarters of what I cover is not being covered by anybody else. And that's, that's, that's what I can do. Yeah. And if somebody yeah. wants to sponsor that wonderful, um, if somebody doesn't not wonderful, but you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is what so, it is. So what, what's uh, the, what's your monetization play? Are you going to, are you doing sponsorship? Already, I didn't. I don't remember you requesting sponsorship, but no. So I, I, I mentioned at the bottom once that I, uh, I have open sponsorships, and I have my first sponsor uh, for my next newsletter. Um, but it's low key still. It's, it's. I don't want to push it too, too hard yet. Um, but the, the number of subscribers have been going up continuously over the last couple of weeks. So when I started, when I rebooted, I had I think about 160, 170. Um, uh, email addresses, and uh, in in about two months, I'm uh, I'm closing in on 500. Nice. So the, the the audience is starting to become somewhat significant. Um, and with that, once I cross 500, which is either this week or next week or or something like that, then uh, I'll start making noise a little bit more. Cool. Um, but yeah, ideally, uh, I'm in a position where. Um, uh, I have people wanting to sponsor me and wanting who want to get in front of a crowd who, uh, and I must say, um, the, the responses that I keep getting every, after every single newsletter I send out of positive, of great feedback, um, which is, I've never had before. So it's nice to know that once I switched to a very more my style type of thing, that's been appreciated and, um, I enjoy that. So that makes it fun. Um, yeah. To the point that if nobody wants to sponsor me, I'll still do the newsletter. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been there. 
no, no, but uh, no, but it's it's it, it's fun. Um, I I enjoy doing this for pretty much the same reasons as you are. So, uh, I I I I see you. I see you fully. Yep. Thank you. Uh, thanks again, and uh, see you next time. <laughs>